This is Open Mailbox. Today I'm going to show you the basics to get started doing user interface programming for your Rust mods. We're going to be using a web design tool. There will be a link down below in the video notes, but this is by far the easiest way to get started, just laying everything out, picking colors, um, getting a feel for, for how you want everything to look in whatever mod you're working on. Now, once you've gotten your design the way you want it, you'll be able to click on the green export button to get the JSON representation of your design. That's what you're going to ultimately need for your code. Now, I've already created a quick design here that I'm going to use for the video, so we'll copy and paste this. Now in Visual Studio, I'm going to save this giant blob of JSON as a static constant string. This is going to be my template for the UI that I want to render to various players on the front end. Now there's a few tweaks that need to be made to the JSON that was exported. Number one, all of the double quotes need to be escaped so that the parser doesn't get confused. Next, one thing that the web tool does not provide is a way to indicate that we want mouse control while this UI element is active. So we're gonna add a component to our top level panel just to indicate that yes, we do want mouse control here um, so that we can click the button. Another thing we need to do is to fill in the command field for the button definition. Um, this is going to be the name of an actual command that we're going to code. Um, and this will be the code that gets executed when the button in the user interface is clicked on. Finally, I'm going to fill in the text fields for the button and label components. Um, the web UI tool doesn't actually export the text for some reason, so you have to fill this in. Um, but I'm going to fill them in with some variables in that I'm going to ultimately replace with code values. Uh, so that's why I'm surrounding these with brackets. Now, once you've got this giant blob of template text in the middle of the screen, um, that can get annoying to look at. So I just kind of like to surround this in a region that I can collapse in Visual Studio. So it's out of my way. I typically don't have to look at or, or mess with the template once I've got it working the way I want to. Um, so we can just get it out of the way. Now we're going to add our first command, which is going to bring up the UI window in the game. Um, this is just a contrived example here. So we're going to type a slash command in order to bring up the window. There will be a button that we can close to get rid of the window. Uh, if you aren't familiar with how to make commands in your Rust plugins, check out some of my previous videos. There's some more basic examples in there. Um, there's also going to be a link to a code repo down below in the video notes if you need some, uh, if you need the code itself for your examples. Here we've defined some variables in the code that I want to replace um, in my template. So I'm going to use the string replace method in order to just swap out my variables for whatever I define the, the variable names of the template to be, and that's what the player is going to end up seeing. Now I'm going to use the cyhelper.destroyui method in order to make sure that if there is a previous instance of this UI element, uh, that the player, that we get rid of that before creating the new one. And the second argument here is the actual name from the top level component in my UI hierarchy. So in this case, hello world. And then finally, to show the new UI element, we use CUI helper add UI uh, with the player and then the actual template. Finally, we're gonna add a console command. This is going to be the code that gets executed when the player clicks on the close button in the UI. And all it's gonna do is close the window and print out a quick console message uh, so that we can verify for this example. Once I have everything copied over onto my server, I go into my game, I use my slash command to open the custom UI. There it is. I click the button once, it makes it go away. We can look in the console and see our confirmation message. And that's all there is to it. If you're looking for more help with coding Rust plugins, check out some of my prior videos. There's a link down below to the GitHub repo with all of the code free to use. And please subscribe to the channel.